Gaslighting, it is a topic we're hearing a lot of these days, and it is an interesting one, but do you know what it really means um, and, and how it impacts all of us? Now, two University of Washington professors are taking this topic head on, teaming up with a mental health professional to host a town hall on Monday. It's called Gaslighting in Government. Joining us now, UW Communication Professor and Department Chair David Domke. Thank you for taking the yeah, time. Good morning. Really so, appreciate it. What is gaslighting? Start there if you could. Sure. Well, it's a, it's a mental health term that's now being increasingly applied in the political and cultural arena in which it describes a process by which people make claims about the world, about reality, and about people that are really demonstrably not true. They just aren't true, and they can be factually easily disproven. But the individual continues to make the claims, doesn't back off of those claims, and then in so doing begins to make the audiences or the hearers begin to doubt their perceptions of the world. Now this might be seem as no big deal if you walked outside and you said the sky is, is green and you can see it's obviously blue. And so you can say, my, you're just, you're mistaken. But when you begin to talk about things that you can't necessarily go verify yourself easily, so a claim that so-and-so is an American citizen or, so -and -so, or the fact that there's certain sizes of crowds outside or that someone's lying behind your back and you're not able to verify that, you begin to really doubt who you are. So it can be quite uh, manipulative and sinister. Why do this and why the three of you in particular to tackle this when it comes to government? Sure. Well, in politics, we always have people who disagree. And so everyone's entitled to their opinions. But what we're getting into with gaslighting is that fact that not everyone's entitled to their facts. The facts are things that we need to agree upon. That's a table right there. OK. And we can't have a civic or civil conversation until we can have some common ground to talk about that. And so this is the issue, I think, in American life and American politics to talk about. How do we ascertain what is real, and then how do we move from that to legitimate points of disagreement? So in your talk at Town Hall, which is Monday evening, yeah. you're specifically kind of trying to address this question about is the current administration trying to manipulate our perception? But I think a lot of people could argue, didn't the previous administration try to manipulate our perception? Don't both sides of the political debate work really hard and use a lot of these tactics to manipulate the, the political debate? Or are we seeing something different today than we have ever before in American politics. Well, it's not an ever before, but it, it is not as simple as saying somebody tries to shape your perceptions. That's what we all do. We try, by the way, we dress all of these things. <laughs> um, the reality, though, is that this current administration is making a set of allegations and claims that just do not appear to be real or true. The size of the crowds, OK? The fact that these people from these countries are more dangerous than these people from these countries. Uh, the pre former president was not an American citizen, this current president says, was a Muslim, right? Those are claims that actually begin to make voters begin to be hostile to others in ways that we can't cross that divide now, right? So I think the closest parallel is, is really maybe back to Joe McCarthy in the 1950s, where claims were made about people's character and about their allegiance to the United States. And that's what we're getting now when we, when we get questions about what country are you from? You don't belong here, right? So this is dividing us in deep ways. It's not a partisan issue. It's an issue about how, who, how do we as a country work together? You know, obviously, we have to be transparent. Travis and I are in the media. We have a vested sure. interest, and in, in we want people to feel they can trust the message that we're bringing. When we're talking about gaslighting here, and we're talking about the potential manipulation of messaging, the way that you can manipulate messaging is through the media. And the administration is arguing that they aren't manipulating any messages, but rather the media is yeah. manipulating facts. Um, is it possible that they have a point? And, and I'm asking this because leading up to this administration, we had lots of stories in the news about fake news websites. We mm. had stories about people getting their news from social media and not being able to verify where they were coming from. There are fake news sites that exist. So how, has, how does the current climate of the way the media reports on the administration, what, what can we all be doing and how does that factor into this? Sure. Well, where it becomes gaslighting is when you begin to take verifiable uh, superb journalism uh, and you begin to characterize that as fake news also. So the fact is the administration has had contact with Russian leadership. That is absolutely verified by many news organizations, by many uh, uh, government agencies. But then to characterize such a report as fake news begins to blur that line between legitimate fake news. So what we have to do is build a, what we talk about at the University of Washington, a kind of a functional media literacy in which we as citizens are able to say, you know what, this is real, this is not real. And the way we have to do about that is actually through an education program, through a conversation such as this, through classes. Also, though, through political leadership, it helps us 
um, to understand that it isn't enough to make a claim. You need to have evidence behind your claims. And that's, that's the point that we're pushing for is claim is fine, but what's your evidence? Okay, so I'm gonna use an example. Let's say that you and I say that this is a front door and Casey's like, that is not a front it door. It is not a front door. But if you and I keep saying to her, that's a front door, that's a front door, at some point she's gonna be like, maybe, maybe it I'm is. Crazy. Maybe it is a front door or maybe <laughs> I'm a crazy person. Right. Is that kind of gaslighting? It is, but the 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 example of that or the sky, color of the sky, seems so easily, dis, uh, you can disagree with that and know that that's fake so easily that it doesn't strike the gravity of it. When, what what where it begins to become so problematic is when you begin to characterize people as enemies of the country, or you begin to say, you know what, that person you're dating, um, you know what, they're cheating behind your back all the time. You can't trust that person. And so now, what are you gonna do with right. that knowledge, right? What are you gonna do with that? You're gonna go talk to that person, and when they say, I'm not cheating, right. well, you're like, oh my gosh, this person keeps telling me you're right. cheating. And by the way, this is not just some person at the bus stop. This is the President of the United States. Right, with all of the arsenals of manipulation and power at their disposal. So when they characterize the press as the enemy of this country, well, that is a grave claim, all right? They may disagree with your news coverage, but that is not what they're saying. They're saying you're the enemy of this country, all right? And that's where I, as a communication professor, former journalist and citizen say, you know what, you're trying to, to demonize these individuals in ways that people will then not believe anything you say. And that would be a disaster for this country. Wow, we could talk about yes. this forever, and we're going to. We're going to yeah. actually hold you hostage for a couple of extra minutes. We're going sure. to tape a few questions with you. I know that a lot of people have questions as well. And we're live on Facebook right now, so if any of you have questions, please feel free to let us know, and we can try to interpret those and pass those along to you. So, sure. really appreciate it. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah.